Hi, Jesus Professor here. And in this episode of Dark Angels 101, we're talking about the death tyrants in my life. A while back, I presented a more scholarly treatment of the death tyrants as fallen angels revealed in scripture. The rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms are consistent over time. So here, I describe how my own life has been subject to these fallen angels of death. As in most cases, it's hard to draw a perfect line between where the struggle with my fallen flesh ends and where the struggle with the fallen death angels begins. Since scripture tells us that the last enemy to be overcome is death in 1 Corinthians 15, we expect that this struggle against death will continue to the end. I was a fairly healthy young man, so the main work of the death tyrants in my younger years was blinding my eyes and deafening my ears to all four stages of evangelism. The plowing stage of evangelism declares that God is a holy creation as a holy creator and that I was separated from God due to my sin. Refusing to acknowledge or have fear of a holy God and refusing to acknowledge our sin and separation from God are works of the death tyrants. The work of death begins by trying to stop us from seeing that we are spiritually dead. As scripture explains, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 28 explains that death is the veil that covers all peoples. As I approached adulthood, death led me to lay hold of the empty way of life handed down by my forefathers through drunkenness, for example. I became like the drunks that God rebukes in Isaiah chapter 28, drugs and alcohol that dull the pain and mute the conviction of the Holy Spirit are like the covenant with death described in that chapter. But the covenant with death will not stand since we will all rise from the dead to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. As scripture says, wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Praise God that his powerful word pierced through the veil and I was brought out of death by the precious blood of Jesus. But the work of death still brought sleep blindness, sloth, and sickness even after I was born again. Disciplines of Bible, prayer, and worship tend to back off the death, but aging and sickness are recurring issues. At times, it can be hard to tell which disease or sickness is just from the fallen condition of death introduced at the fall and which are due more specifically to the angel of death and his subordinate evil spirits. Two principles have proven helpful here. One, pray for healing before seeking medical care. And two, ask God to show us the path to healing and be open to pursuing deliverance prayer as needed as we seek our healing from the Lord. Another significant area of the work of death in my ongoing Christian life is what I describe as death divination. This is a bit different from Python divination. Python divination is closer to witchcraft and under the kingdom of the tyrant queens. Death divination is more like a no, like a wet blanket on the Holy Spirit's leading. It's the voice in our hearts and minds saying, that's not going to work. That always that doubt, it's not gonna work, it's gonna fail, or the ongoing reminder of past sins and failures that's framed in a manner to predict 
future sins and failures relating to what God is calling us to do. My efforts against death divination are being careful and intentional about seeking God's will and being willing to try things beyond what I think is going to work from my natural assessments. I recommend being more concerned about the work of the death angels in one's own life before attempting to address the work of the death tyrants in other people's lives. As Jesus said, first get the log out of your own eye. But it is instructive to mention that just as the death tyrants were at work in my own life resisting evangelism, the death tyrants represent the veil over the eyes, the ears, and the hearts of other people also. Furthermore, the death angels are often our adversaries in healing prayer. This is why James tells us that confession of sins is important when we seek healing prayer. The cords of sin are closely related to the cords of death. Consider, Proverbs 5 says, The evil deeds of a wicked man ensnare him. The cords of his sin hold him fast. Psalm 18 says, The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. Now, we don't want to be like Job's friends who assume that there's always sin underlying every sickness and trial. But we can gently ask some questions as we consider the possibility of whether that's true in the specific case that we're dealing with or praying with in the current situation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that's available to us. Help us, Lord God, to come out of the death. Help us, Lord God, to wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on us. Shine on us, Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name. Wake us up. Bring us out of the death. Say to us, just as you said to Lazarus, come out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Suicide rates are rising rapidly, so most Jesus followers should prepare ourselves for a more active role in preventing suicides. We are on the front line since pros rarely get involved until a foot soldier helps connect people in crisis with trained professionals. E94.org is a Christian ministry dedicated to equipping the church to prevent suicide through free training of foot soldiers to prevent suicide through training, consulting, and resources. Get equipped to give hope and help and confidently refer people to professional counselors. Learn more at e94.org. Thank you.